Hello, welcome to this week's installment of The Lone Ranger in the Phony World. I am Holden Caulfield. You know, one thing I never understood about people is how goddamn foolish they are. I mean, they're really foolish. I was talking to this one, uh, this one person on the train over, uh, Ernie Morrow's mom. Boy, <laughs> was she gullible. I told her that my goddamn grandmother is uh, taking me to South America or some baloney place. It was rich. She was so goddamn obsessed with her son, Ernie. What a phony. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, people like him uh, and all, they can be all right. And on their own, they're fine. But Pensy was chock full of pure phonies. I told her he was the president of our uh, goddamn school or something. And she believed me. I mean, Ernie's an okay guy and he has a lot of friends, but he's such a phony. You know, I can't even believe it. Think of it this way. Uh, say we have one person, only one. Then let's say he's so goddamn phony that people believe him. He's a likable guy, right? Fat chance. <laughs> he's like an animal in a glass box. People love to see him, but he isn't the real wild animal. You know, his own phoniness traps him, makes him a victim. That doesn't matter. He'll realize it eventually. I guess I should explain myself. You see, I, w I was covered in blood before. Um, there was this, this phony strat leader at that goddamn school at P Pensy. What a jerk, you know? I'm goddamn sure that he went necking with, uh, with Jane. I can't believe him sometimes. He should have known that Jane was too good for him. He's just another goddamn phony, like, like Ernie. You know, these foolish people are always falling for phonies anyway. I, I decided to take, take a little action, so I socked him dead in the face. Right? I mean, you should have seen it. It's absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, he's a pretty strong dude. And normally, I'd be able to take someone like him, uh, but I sort of missed on the first go, and he just got me down and started started punching me, as if he couldn't be more of a jerk. Even Mrs. Morrow saw the blood on my face. We were smoking too. She was, she was still able to see it within the smoke. Now, I don't care about Strad later anymore, though. He's just a phony. He doesn't doesn't deserve my attention. I, uh, I guess I should talk a little more about the train ride over, you see. I mean, if you want. I guess I could tell you. I, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll talk about it. Uh, Mrs. Morrow, she was, she's pretty charming. I mean, <laughs> I know where Ernie gets his phoniness from, but she was worried about all about me because I guess I was too young for it but I didn't care. I was able to bring her around anyway, man. I swear, smoking makes people look so good. Like, if I saw her around, I wouldn't say she had sex appeal, but once she was in that train car, I mean, she was gorgeous. I couldn't believe it. I offered her cocktails too, uh, but she started with the big, oh, I think you're too young business. That was a load of bull. Then, then I showed her my gray hairs, right? <laughs> she loved that. It was so unbelievable how, how phony she was and all. Well, I guess that's it. You know, I really don't know what else to talk about today. I, it's, it's really just the same as always. <laughs> Phonies are everywhere. You gotta look out for them, you know? They like to cover themselves up and they end up full of baloney and make fools of themselves. But uh, watch out for them. This is the Lone Ranger. Have a nice night, I guess. You can't even begin to understand, you know? But, since you really want to know, I guess I'll tell you. She had this green dress on, this goddamn green dress. I just hung it up. She probably bought it in this store, this nice store. And nobody there knew she was what she was. She looked regular. Why did she have to look right here? She looks like a whore. It would have been different. But 
She just didn't. She had on that green dress. I shouldn't have hung it up. I should have made her keep it on. But I didn't want it. You know what I've been saying? Jim Steele. All night I've been telling people that I'm Jim Steele. What a phony name. There was this kid at Wooten School named, uh, oh god, what was it, uh, Arthur Childs. Now, he was a phony kid. I would argue with him over the Bible a lot, you know, about the disciples, and, you know, goddamn disciples. I didn't like them, but he said if I didn't like them, I didn't like Jesus. He would always say that Judas went to hell after he betrayed Jesus, but I would bet him a thousand bucks. Hell, I still would. Jesus would not have sent Judas to hell. I just know he wouldn't. But Childs didn't really like me too well because, well, I didn't go to church. Have you ever wanted to pray? I mean, have you ever really just wanted to pray? I'm trying. I'm trying so goddamn hard, but I, I can't. I, I keep seeing old Sonny just sitting there and calling me a, a what was it, a crumb bum. I've been smoking a lot, and, well, not, not just two packs and all, but... Yeah, who's there? What, what do you, what's up? What do you want? My five bucks, chief. I paid her the five. It's ten. No, you said it was five. Always been ten. You clearly said five for a throw. All right, cut the crap, Chief. I need to get uh, back to work. D no. <laughs> you chiseling moron. <laughs> well, you wouldn't believe what happened <laughs> this evening. Uh, but I, I, I guess, you know, I, I saw this guy, right? His what's his name? Chris? No, Carl. 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 Uh, loose. <laughs> and he's like, he's all like, Holden, gotta grow up. Gotta grow up, Holden. Grow up. And I was like, I didn't even listen to him. You know, who was? He's probably just another phony, you know? Like, I always talk to phonies and how, you know, I always talk about him because I'm just the Lone Ranger in the phony world, you know? Wouldn't you believe I saw it too? I saw the most phony person ever. You know, it was like, it was like serious. You know, he probably, he probably thought he was a big hot shot playing piano. <laughs> His hands were so fine to him. <laughs> and he brought this girl up, right? And she was, she was good looking. She was, I mean, she couldn't sing well, but man, she was like an angel. <laughs> but I don't know. I told the waiter to bring her on over, you know, so I could talk to her. But he was a big phony too. You know what I did? I called Sally. I called Sally, and she was so happy to hear me again, and I was so happy to hear her again. I I told her I would, uh, you know, uh, I'm not really sure anymore. But she hung up on me. <laughs> she she hung up on me. I stayed in that booth such a long time, and she hung up on me. <laughs> I just was looking at the streets, you know? I wasn't looking at any people, just looking at the empty streets. But she hung up on me. Wait. She, she hung up on me. Maybe that's not a good thing after all. <laughs> Why would she hang up? I don't know. I don't know, I stayed in that boot a long time. I had trouble getting out or some. But once, once I did get out, it was pretty weird because I could barely walk and stuff. I swear I'm crazy man or something. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think I was uh, I washed myself next or something like the sink. <laughs> that was just another phony or something. <laughs> and I sat down and I just sat and I sat and I sat some more, just drip, drip, dripping all over myself next to the radiator. <laughs> there was no people. <laughs> but <laughs> at least I got God with me. <laughs> well, sorry about that, folks. Like, from the bottom of my heart, sorry about that. Things are a bit, a bit hazy, I guess. Uh, I don't know. 
I guess I really don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm not here alone. But, uh, where I'm supposed to be going. I'm gonna go see Phoebe again, I know that much. Um, you know, see her red hair, listen to her stories. She'll kill you, I'm telling you. She'll kill you. She kills me. Anyway, I'm just a lone rager in a phony world. Sorry about the last vlog, folks, and, uh, signing off.